if you flip over to the next page, there's a, a quick activity that's designed to further show you the importance of knowing etymology. Below are a set of words with two columns next to it. The first column is for you to know what you think the words mean, and the column to the right is, is for you to know what words truly mean. We're going to go through a few of them just so we can get a good understanding. A dollar. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. How many people thought a dollar was a piece of paper? Come on now, be honest. It's okay. Right? You think a dollar, that dollar bill, right? The true etymological root of a dollar is actually a silver coin. So you see, we never even really had dollars. That's just bills. But that's a whole other discussion. How about kid? Kid, what do you think? Oh, 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 guys, 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 guys are on. See, I, I found that one out a couple of years, and now I catch myself. Anytime I say kid, I, I'll say child or young one or middle one. Mm -hmm. And even if you look at the word kid backwards, you know what you got, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loud. This is a good one. This is a good one I, 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 I find very interesting. How about ethnic? What you guys think? Ethnic. Anybody? Your brother? Yeah. What's ethnic? What you think? Uh, I think ethnic being a group of people. Mm, okay. How about heathen? Mm. Exactly. Heathen. Mm -hmm. Not what ethnic means. Oh, oh, but it is. Oh, that's, that's what you're saying? That's what it truly wow. is. Wow. Okay. So when you think of ethnic studies, <laughs> right? <laughs> mm. What are they really saying? Pagan yeah. studies. Mm. Let's see if you don't know it. Right over your head. Uh -huh. Ghetto. How about ghetto? German word. Mm. Mm. Comes, comes from comes from Europe. Mm. See, I you know, I'm growing up, you hear, oh, that's ghetto, right? Like it's an action, right? Right. You live in the ghetto, thinking it's supplying to us originally. However, look into the history of ghetto and find out it was used on some other people before us. But it has a direct correlation. What happened to those people is happening to us right now. Genocide, right now. And the lovely black. We know what we think black means. Who knows what black truly means? Dead in the eyes of the law. Mm, legally, true, true indeed. Epithet. Mm -hmm. It basically means it's a character. Mm -hmm. What'd you say, sis? Pale. Pale. Pale and bleach. Contrary to our beliefs, contrary to our feelings, black is pale. Doesn't mean us. We gotta know this. We have to know this, and this is not, and once again, all of this is not based on emotions, not based on what I think, not based on what I feel. You can look it up in the dictionary for yourself. Like a wise man says, just prove it wrong. Well, I think you'll find that uh, you'll, be, you'll be amazed at what you see. Now that we've established what etymology is and the importance of the science, let it, let's examine the word status and other key words associated to it. I have a simple definition sections for each word that include the etymolo etymology of the word as well as four definitions of the word from multiple sources. And this is by no means a comprehensive source for you to rely solely upon. This is just as a reference guide as you're studying. However, everyone should have an unabridged dictionary, multiple unabridged dictionaries, multiple law dictionaries, thesaurus, um, a dictionary on the, the root and etymology of words. <laughs> um, uh, dictionaries that translates words from Spanish to English, from Hebrew, from Latin to English. All of these should be within reach while you're studying so that you can have a really good comprehensive understanding of what's being communicated. Status. Definition one, standing, state, or condition. And that's Black's Law, fourth edition. 
Definition two, it also means a state because it signifies the condition or circumstances in which one stands with regard to his property. <clears throat> Number three, the legal character or condition of a person or a thing. I'm gonna move over to standing. Anybody wanna read the first, the first two definitions of standing? Etymology of stand, Middle English, to stand or to stand. Before 900, from standard, Old English standard, Old High German stand, stanton, stand up, stand in, akin to Latin stair to stand. Okay. And then we can go in just to the first two there. Mm -hmm. One's place in the community, in the estimation of others, Black's Law for Edition. His relative position in social, commercial, or moral relations. His repute, brand, or rank. Black law for position. Okay. So just to, just uh, just to uh, can you guys hear me back there? You guys good? Um, just to, just so we drill it in your head. Status is equal to a state. Synonymous. Okay. Let's keep this in mind. Status is equal to a state. We're going to move down to a state. We're going to read a state. How about you, brother? Uh, start at number one. Yeah. The word estate is a word of the greatest extension and comprehends every species, every species of property. Uh, read, I mean, this is real and perverse. It describes both corpus and the extent of interest, Black Law's fourth edition. A state is constantly used in conversing in connection with words, right, title, and interest, and is in a great degree uh, synonymous, synonymous. synonymous with all of them, Black Law's fourth edition. Okay, status is synonymous with a state. A state is synonymous with right, title, and interest. So when you're talking about status, you're talking about rights, titles, interest, estate. All of those are synonymous. Okay? You flip over, they have the definitions of right, title, interest as well. You guys can study these on your own, but they're here for you to read. But just know that when we're talking about, yeah? Kind of basic question. What is called Black's Law Dictionary? Uh, that was the person, Henry Black. Oh, okay. But there's other, there's other law dictionaries. Duvier is another one. Uh, but okay. it's simply just the person who was named. Just like yeah. Webster. Right, exactly. Uh, I'm going to read condition. The rank, situation, or degree of a particular person and someone of, of the different orders of society or his status or situation considered as a judicial person arising from positive law or the institutions of society. Mode or state of being, state or situation, essential quality, property, attribute. Black's Law, fourth edition. Down in number four, state, a particular mode of being applied to external circumstances to the body, to the mind, and to things. All right? Islam? Islam. Uh, oh, and I should have said this before, but at uh, each uh, chapter at the end is a little section for notes. Um, if there's a question that you have, if there's a topic that you didn't hear me cover, there's a comment you want to make, or when you're on studying, you want to jot something down, you can write it here as we proceed. If you have something that I didn't mention and you want to bring it up, please do. And also let me say this, although I am, I have the status right now as the teacher, understand that you are all teachers. Okay, don't think that I'm up here and I have all the answers. That's not how it works. I mean, we're sitting in this class format, but really in your mind, think of this as a circle. Okay? And I'm putting information on the table. You also, all of you have the equal status in that sense of putting information forth on the table for everyone, because this is for the upliftment of our nation. 
and humanity. So we have to realize that we all have an equal share in doing this work. Islam? Islam. Islam. All right. Chapter Dos. What is status? Now that we have laid down a solid foundation of the etymological and legal definitions of status, let us simplify the meaning, or as the wise elder teacher El Haj Malik El Shabazz, also known as Malcolm X, very interesting on that, we'll, we'll cover that a little later. Um, but as El Haj Malik would say, let's make it plain. <laughs> what is status? Status is one's place in the universe and one's relationship to everything and person in it. You read that one more time. Mm -hmm. Status is one's place in the universe and one's relationship to everything and person in it. Who does status apply to? Status applies to every single being in the universe. Everything, every person has a position, a place, and standing in the universe. Pause right here just for a moment. I know, um, depending upon what school of thought you may come from, you may have heard people say, you know, I'm a divine being, or I'm a God, you know, so those labels and things don't apply to me. Even divine being, that's a status. Mm -hmm. Saying you're a God, that's a status. Mm -hmm. So understand that even, no matter how conscious you feel that you are, mm -hmm. everyone has a status. Mm -hmm. right. And you must know it. <clears throat> Not just believe it. Not just think you know what it means, but truly know. Islam? Islam. When does our status apply or become activated? From the moment we are created. I would say born, but even before that, you have a status as a fetus or an embryo. That's also a status. In fact, in, 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 uh, in law, they're you know, battling over the rights of a fetus and the status, I mean, an uh, embryo and such in terms of abortion. So even even then, when you're not even conscious and you can't even talk and walk and all of that, you have a status. Islam? And how is our status determined? Our status is determined in several ways. By our appearance, by our language, our titles and our names, our actions, and our records and documents. Now that we have a solid understanding of status and some simple ways that it can be applied, let us get a little deeper with the science. Status represents many different facets of our lives, but for this course, we will focus on three parts. So I broke down status um, just so that we can get a, a good understanding. We have status as it's originally spelled. That's our relationship to people, to the community, be it this classroom, uh, your block, your neighborhood, your city, your state, your nation, the continent, the world, the universe, as status. A state. Yes. No, so it's also important to know that we have very many different statuses that people with the video mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. Um, you have a state, which is one's relationship to all property, be it the property in my pocket, the property in your home, the property as your family, the property as a nation, including the land and all the resources within it. And just, just, just a little piece for homework, what I would like you to do, I thought about this. Um, when you go home, look at everything you have in your home and make a list of all of your property or your estate. Make a list of all the books, all the CDs, movies, clothes, socks, pens, food supplies, everything. Then, start putting the price to it. Put what its value is. You add that up. That's your personal estate. You can do that with your entire family. Now that's your family's estate. And you can get that insured. You see? So I just want us to realize that we're not as broke or as poor as it may seem. We may not have the fiat notes or the dollar bills but we do have some, we do have an estate, we do have property. And once we get on a larger scale, we'll start to realize we have a much vast, much more vast estate than we ever realized. 
The last section, so we have status, relationship with people, the community, estate, your relationship with property. And the last one is state. That's your mental state, the relationship with your mind. And this is actually one of the most important. Um, let me read real quickly. Uh, this is the Kabilian. Has anybody heard of this? <coughs> the Kabilian? A kibalam, a, a kibayam. Yes. Uh, do you spell it for you? Yes. Yes. K y b a l i o n. K y b a l i o n. Now this is some teachings, uh, hermetic philosophy. And his teachings from uh, a master teacher known as Hermes Trismegistus. That's the name that's used in Greece, or Greek. If you go back a little farther, you see that his name is Tehuti. Mm. If you go back a little farther, you see he's also referred to as Thor. Mm. Okay? And this is dealing with Atlantis and Atlantean history and culture. But realize this is for you know, and more uh, understanding Egyptian or Kemetic philosophy. This is what this is. Oh, online? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he asked me where I get the book from. Mm -hmm. You said to who? I mean, to who? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what was there? Yeah. Uh, Thoth, T H. Yeah. T H O T H. Oh, T H O T H? Mm hmm. Do some research on this, brother. Mm -hmm. Very, very important information. Mm -hmm. This is also another I'm going to read. I'll read, I'll read from this real quickly. This is the Emerald Tablets of Thor, the Atlantean. Okay? Let me just read something real quick, especially since we're dealing with law. Emerald Tablet 3, the key of wisdom. He who oversteppeth the law shall be punished. For only through law comes the freedom of men. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't my teaching. Mm -hmm. This isn't my words. Mm -hmm. This is an ancient master teacher. Okay? Getting back to the Kabilian, I wanted to just read briefly the chapter on mental transmutation. Mind, as well as metals and elements, may be transmuted from state to state, degree to degree, condition to condition, pole to pole, vibration to vibration. True hermetic transmutation is a mental art. As we have stated, the hermetists were the original alchemists, astrologers, and psychologists, Hermes having been the founder of these schools of thought. He was the founder of this. From astrology has grown modern astronomy. From alchemy has grown modern chemistry. From mystic psychology has grown the modern psychology of the schools. But it must not be supposed that the ancients were ignorant of that which the modern schools supposed to be their exclusive and special property. The records engraved on the stones of ancient Egypt show conclusively that the ancients had full comprehensive knowledge of astronomy, the very building of the pyramids, showing the connection between their design and the study of astronomical science. Mm -hmm. Nor were they ignorant of chemistry, for the fragments of the ancient writings show that they were acquainted with the chemical properties of things. In fact, the ancient theories regarding psychics are being slowly verified by the latest discoveries of modern science, notably those relating to the constitution of matter. Uh, and skipping down a little further. Transmutation is a term usually employed to designate the ancient art of the transmutation of metals, particularly of the base metals into gold. The word transmute means to change from one nature, form, or substance into another. And accordingly, mental transmutation means the art of changing and transforming mental states, forms, and conditions into others. So you may see that mental transmutation is the art of mental chemistry. 
if you like the term, a form of practical mystic psychology. But this means far more than appears on the surface. Transmutation, alchemy, or chemistry on the mental plane is important enough in its effects, to be sure. And if the art stopped there, it would still be one of the most important branches of study known to man. I read this because our state of mind, our mental condition, has been, we we're very ill mentally. And that's one of the most important sciences. When you change the mind, you change everything else. For on this plane of existence, all is mine. It all starts from here. Some I tell my daughter, you think it, you speak it, you be it. Before you can be it, you gotta speak it. And before you speak it, you gotta think it. Okay? So just a, I'm giving you an understanding of why our mental state, the state of our mind is very important and why it's key for us changing our status and everything else that follows with it. Islam? Islam. Status is your individual rank or position as it relates to the larger group. We'll go to examples of status. It's one thing to read the definitions or read the explanation of status, how it works, but if you aren't able to process the information and demonstrate your understanding of it, then I have not done my job as a teacher, and you have not truly learned. Now on the next page, there's some uh, images that I have. We're gonna go through it, and we're gonna first go through uh, our status based on appearance. And just based on the appearance of the first image here, at the top, what status would you give those people? Hmm? Monks, priests, monks, priests. You see, based on their attire, mm -hmm. how about the image below that? Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam. Okay, okay. <laughs> Understand. You see the brother there, he has a, a chain around his neck? Mm -hmm. Would you know that that was a rapper? Mm -hmm. Just based off his appearance? Oh, yeah, we Just based off his appearance? Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. How about how about on the next page there, the uh, the people with the, uh, the, the the weapon? Colonizer Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> some, some sort of mili military. I heard military. Right. Soldier. Okay. Let's dig a little deeper. Do you know what kind of soldier? Based, Royal soldier. Based on the appearance, can you tell? What division? Are they from the, the military, the army? Or the like army. army. Mm. Or the khakis. Mm. Mm. Would you know that they're a private security force, Blackwater? Well, yeah. Oh, mm. yeah. Now you see, when you get a little more detailed in terms of appearance, you can identify different soldiers by their, their respective uh, you know, medals or insignia that's on the uniform. And if you notice there, you can't really identify what, what and who they are. Right? Peace to my wife. Um, based on the people's appearance, we can assign some sort of status to them. We need to be conscious of this as people and communities can and will make determinants about who you are simply based on your appearance. Okay? That's why the appearance is very important. Um, in fact, that's why I actually came in this hoodie today. Mm -hmm. By my appearance, I may have one status that may be different if I came in here in a three-piece suit like our brother Rami is. Mm -hmm. right? The appearance... Two-piece. Two-piece. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I would do this even when I was in school and in college. I'll wear a hoodie, sit in the back of the class, to give off the appearance, to see how people would treat me, right? especially the teachers, see how they, how they would react to me. Not knowing what I know or who I am, just based off my appearance. And I also saw this when I, uh, I used to have a, uh, a job, a uh, plantation job, really. Um, and we traveled to Switzerland. And I, you know, I was wearing the suits out there. 
and you'll be surprised at how the tone of people change. Oh, good evening. Good afternoon, sir. <laughs> right this way, sir. Right, just based on the appearance. Don't know who I am. Next up is the chart below. It has a list of both names and titles of different people from different communities or society. Let us examine them and see what statuses are communicated by the names and the titles. First up, Beyonce. What status does she have? Based on that name, what do you think? Beyonce. Queen. Oh. Entertainer. Money. <laughs> okay, what about Hannibal? Warrior. Name Hannibal. Warrior. Mm. Warrior. Soldier. General. Anybody thought Hannibal Lecter like in the movies? Ah, see? Not, not Hannibal Barker, one of the most, one of the best and most well-known generals ever in the history. It was a war, by the way. What about um, Wasilu Muhammad Jaco? Anybody have an idea on who that is? Mm -hmm. Ah, my man. What is it? Brother said Lupe Fiasco. Anybody heard of him? Yeah. 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 A rapper. But that's his actual true name. You see, Lupe Fiasco is the entertaining man. But everybody says you knew that. Yeah. Oh. Alright, man. All right. Got that one, man. I, just, I just gave him uh, 77 amazing facts about the Moors. Wow. Little plug, little plug. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's because I'm a little partial to hip hop, so you <laughs> What about um, El Haj Malik El Shabazz? Wow. Ah, you see? You see? But, but, <laughs> maybe next time. Uh, what about Yip Man? Yip Man. Martial artist. Mm. How many people knew that that was the person that trained Bruce Lee? You see? Gotta understand. Got to know. Um, let's go over the titles. How about uh, a chief? A chief. What kind of status is a chief? Anyone? Like a king. Like the chief. Like the president. You would be like the high, okay. the high chief. Indeed, indeed. How about a grand chief? What's that? Teacher. 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 Um, Okay, what about what about ESQ? Esquire. Oh, okay, you guys are on it. You guys are on it today. Esquire. Okay. Uh, what about um? We'll close it out with uh, Michael Jackson. Oh, kind of Genius. <laughs> Genius. Mm. Maybe this is this is my this is my personal opinion, but I feel that you know down the line of some years he'll be known as a prophet. Yeah. We see him as entertainer now, but that that name that may have a different status, you know, a hundred years from now. One thing, one thing I've learned is that you know why why he has the root word L and Mike L. Mikael, get it? Or where we are now, Samuel L. Mary Cop. Just something to notice. As we see in our addition to our appearance, a status can be communicated based off our names and titles. We need to be conscious of this because contrary to popular belief, words can indeed hurt you if used incorrectly or in ignorance. Next we have our status being determined by our actions. This is generally known and accepted without much thought, but let's just demonstrate just a little bit to be, uh, be clear. For example, if you've seen a person that was on the side of the freeway Holding up a sign, hand out. What status would you give that person? Homeless. Homeless. Beggar. Black. That's an action. How about uh, a person that has a hose and is spraying a building that's on, on fire? Fire. Fire. fire? 
right? This is simple, but this is just to help you understand that your status can be communicated by your actions. Okay? Lastly, let us cover a few examples of records and documentation that communicate our status. A driver's license, a birth certificate, a nationality card. All of these communicate a status. And these in particular, these documents and records and such, these are a little more concrete, as it's not entirely up to interpretation. It really much says, it says pretty clearly what status is being communicated. But if you don't know what it is, that's where you can run into trouble. Islam? Islam. Finally, let us remember that one status, whether it is appearance, names, actions, and documentation, depends on the knowledge or awareness of the group, community it is interacting with. You can have the most honorable title or be one of the world's greatest rap artists. Peace, my man. <laughs> but if the community you are re relating to is ignorant of that information, ignorant meaning not known. And then let me take a step back. Let's understand ignorance is just a lack of information, a lack of knowledge. Don't confuse it as something negative, as it being stupid, um, a lack of ability to understand. You simply don't know. So, you know, if you hear me say, or you, you come across the word ignorant, don't take it offensive. We are all ignorant of some things. To remain ignorant, to remain ignorant, now that's where the problem lies. Once you don't know, now it's your duty to find out. Islam? Islam. And I, I, you know, on that point, you know, I just want to interject, even in the um, the Holy Service 7 Quran, it'll tell you that in order for us to gain it and gain knowledge, we first must admit that we're ignorant of it. Mm -hmm. We must first admit and embrace ignorance mm -hmm. in order to open the door for knowledge. Yeah. So that's even within our book, <clears throat> chapter uh, 43, I think it's 43. It's, uh, it's my second favorite. Um, I still that number. I think it's 43. But we must embrace ignorance as, as the uh, Rami Salam is telling us. Embrace that. Admit it. If you don't know, I don't know is, is, is the most powerful words you can say sometimes. Because then you're going to be taught and you'll leave with gain from that moment forward. Islam. True. True. I mean, that, I can speak from personal experience. Biggest player in our community. Mm. I, you know, I, I grew up um, you know, I was always told I was pretty intelligent growing up. I was smart in class. I got good grades. So when I felt like I knew something, I would stand on it and I'm ready to defend it. I know what I know what I'm talking about. Right? I remember I got into this argument with a, a Jamaican brother about what's the biggest sport in the world. I'm like American football. Don't you see the Super Bowl? He said, "Yeah, young brother, I, I hear you, but you know, around the world." Football or soccer, as we know it, right. is really the, the biggest sport in the world. Yes, it is. And I was, you know, ignorant, right? I'm thinking I know what I'm talking about. I go home, start trying to get some facts together <laughs> on the stadium sizes, and then I found out. I said, "Oh, <laughs> that was a mistake, right?" But that's the humbling. You gotta eat that humble pie. And when you don't know, it's okay. I don't know. You know what? I don't know. My bad. Can you teach me? You see, and then that's how you get to the process of knowing. Uh, I wanted to say something quick also on uh, the community being ignorant and the, the, the relationship to the community you're relating, you're relating to about the information. Uh, I walked around Lake Merritt, um, which is not too far from here, with my fares on a couple of weeks back just to see amongst different reasons, but one, just to see how people would react to it. And what I noticed was most of our people, Americans, Moorish Americans to be specific, they walked right by me like I wasn't even there, right? Not knowing that affairs represents our crown. However, European people, they would look, give me a smile, give me a nod, right? whole different energy, because some of them knew, you see? See, and they understand the importance of it. They understand the honor and the respect that it holds. 
So it depends on who you're relating to, the community that you're relating to, and the knowledge that the community has that you relate to. Because if the community does have no idea, it's just a funny hat. Right? It's just a funny hat. This dude, this black dude is wearing a funny hat walking around the lake. <laughs> or that's a Moorish American wearing the feds, the ancient crown. Islam, brother in the back? Yes, Islam, brother. Um, I have a story to share briefly about my experience with the European in Connecticut. Mm. Um, I was at a food co op a couple years ago. A bit. I was at a food co op a couple years ago, and I was, I was wearing my feds. It was winter season, and a European woman, she, um, she approached me in a joking manner, and she says, You're wearing that hat because it's cold outside? And I said, no, it's my national and religious headdress. And she says, national and religious? And I told her that I was more American. And she repeated more American. And I said that, yeah, we're standing on Moroccan soil. And so afterwards, she invited me over to her table. And we began speaking. I told her that this was El Maghrib. And at the end of our 30-minute conversation, as I was walking away, she said, so you're more American, and you wear that fez and that honor. I said, yes. It's popularized by masons and shriners, but um, it's, it's not a known fact. And as I turned to walk away, she says, oh, you mean the people that stole your government? Hmm. <laughs> 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 Just to echo what you're saying, they, they pretty much know the Europeans. Man, I, let, me, let me build on another story. I was going to a, uh, I was going to a, uh, a donut shop. Get some Chinese food, even though the brother well, actually isn't Chinese, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, as I go in, an elder uh, Moore asked me, you know, if you got some change on the way out, can you, can you help me out? No problem. I go out, give him a few of the uh, fiat notes, not dollars. Right? Give him a few of the fiat notes, and I start talking to him, just building, and an elder European brother comes up pushing a, a, a cart, also uh, appearing to be homeless. And he's saying, you know, it's, it's good that, you know, you're, that people are helping out people. This is what we need more of in humanity. You know, instead of people just walking by us like we're, we're nothing, et cetera, et cetera, right? At the end of the conversation, I say, you know, I t to the European brother, I said, what's your name, brother? And he said, um, I honestly don't remember, but it was like, you know, Fred Smith, something like that, right? I say, pleasure to meet you, Fred. I'm Rami Salam Mel. Immediately, he bowed. He said, my Muslim name is Hakeem Muhammad. Whoa. Something like that. Right? It blew me away. Because the appearance of him was a homeless European brother. Right? <laughs> a homeless European brother. As soon as I, I communicated to him my true appellation, my true name, he let me in that he knew me and gave me the honor and the respect. So, you know, it's, it's very interesting. Once you start standing on the truth, and you start communicating your status with people, you will see the changes that happen, as opposed to, I'm just a black man. You understand? Islam? Is there any questions before we uh, move forward? Okay. Chapter three. It is our current status and how it affects us. This is where it's going to get a little deep. So, many of y'all that still have the belief that we're black, black Americans, African American, uh, you hard go see. It's going to be hard to digest. Yeah, even, even the word Afro. Yeah. Right, Afro. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, um, what's the difference between understanding and understanding? I know I read that, and I'm like, why would you put inner stand, you know? Uh, well, uh, in brief, I, from, my, from my perspective, understanding is when you're standing under it, when you're, you know, you're trying to grasp that comprehension. Understanding is when you, you feel it inside, and you, and you know it inside. Part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Overstanding is when you see it, and you see the, you see the whole thing, you see the, the whole scope of things. Um, there's an interview with Tupac actually where he's breaking it down um, uh, with this brother named Cody Scott. I forget his actually true appellation, but he was an ex gang member. Uh, Monster Cody. Monster Cody. And he says, understanding is like seeing the police helicopter in the sky. You see the helicopter and you see it going around. 
Overstanding is the helicopter's perspective of the ground. They can see it all. So you may have an understanding of this, excuse me, there's a helicopter up there, and you can see it and you can move around and you see a certain perspective. But from the helicopter's perspective, the overstanding perspective, you see it all. You can, you can see very clearly what's going on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. In these days and times, Moors are unfortunately known as blacks, black American, African American, people of color, Negroes, niggers, ETC. All of these terms are synonymous with the term Negro, especially black as it literally means Negro in Spanish. Look it up if you do not believe me. You can get a color crayon, matter of fact. Go to Crayola, just flip it around. They have English and Spanish on there. You, you pull up that black crayon, you see it says Negro, right? We use black in, in cultural and social respects, and it can be interpreted differently. We use black power, right? The black man is God, the black woman is God, right? And that's okay when we're relating to that specific community, culturally. But when we're talking about law, when we're talking about truth, black is not where it's at. This is not my feelings. We can look through history as we shall, and we'll see what black communicates as a status. Right, Ms. Long. You know, and I also want to interject on that. With what we're dealing with, I would advise everyone to get that connotative linguistics out. Because in most cases, when you're dealing with a... Um, a situation where you're in danger or where you have to present something that maybe is uncommon to you, then what you normally do, what is habit, comes out. And so if you keep walking around doing something that's backwards, understand that when presented, you know, certain parts of your brain, your reactive mind kicks in for protection. Your reactive mind has been trained to do something. And until you reorientate yourself, correct yourself, it will come back out. So as much as we understand and embrace what our brothers are saying and sisters are saying to us in love, when they say black power or this and that, we understand, we understand what they're saying because they're coming at us in love. However, that does not mean we embrace the connotative linguistics and the, and the spell it cast upon us. You see, and we can't um, walk around with knowledge and still present ourselves as ignorant. Mm -hmm. okay. right. It's very, very confusing when we do that. Yeah. Let me read yes. a, quick, uh, a quick excerpt from the autobiography of Malcolm X, El Hajj Rilly Gil Shabazz. It kind of hammers home on this point, you know, especially because most black people, quote, quote, black people, uh, they always talk about Malcolm X by any means necessary. ETC, but rarely do they really listen to what he was saying. So let's examine this. Page 347, when he was in Mecca. You may be shocked by these words coming from me, but on this pilgrimage, what I have seen and experienced has forced me to rearrange much of my thought patterns previously held and to toss aside some of my previous conclusions. This was not too difficult for me. Despite my firm convictions, I have, al I have been always a man who tries to face facts and to accept the reality of life as new experience and new knowledge unfolds it. I've always kept an open mind, which is necessary to the flexibility that must go hand in hand with every form of intelligent search for truth. This is this is coming from Brother El Haj Malik himself. When he found out some truth, he on to it. Now he's standing on that. And that's what we must do. I know it's easy for us to say, what's up, black man? And that's cool, but it ain't cool. Really and truly, right? really and truly it's, not, it's not cool. Look at the back. Islam. 
Allah's praises. Allah, Speak up just a for me, brother. Give honor to all Moors here. Islam. 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 What the brother just talked about with regards to black not being cool, black power, things of this nature, it's not cool because European taught us to say that. Islam. Yeah, sure. During the institution of slavery. Yep. A learning institution. Removed more and said, we're going to call them Negro, black, color. We're going to call them nigger first. Period. Then we're going to call them whatever we want to call them after that. But when it became politically correct, we were taught thought patterns. The theme of our thought was we're black. I said before, black is an epithet, meaning a, a, a way to describe the character of a person, like that old man. That didn't describe, that didn't tell you how old he is. It's telling you his character, his mannerism, mm -hmm. his condition. His condition. And so, and his capacity or status. So it's not, you know, when somebody says black, they're not referring to the color of your skin. I'm not black, I'm brown. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about the color of our skin. We're right. talking about the character right. of an individual. So what is the character of black? When you hear the word black, like you hear the word old, when you think about the character of a black man, what's being portrayed out there? Who taught you about the character? The European did. And the number one character is inferior. And With that? And With that, I say Islam, please. Islam. 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 Right. Let, let's, uh, let's, let's show and prove. Let's not just speak on it. I want you also, when you go home, look up black in the dictionary. And you will see that it is an adjective describing, just as the brother said, describing the person, right? Or describing the thing. Black car, black shoes, black man. Describe it, but not identify it. Well, let's get into the law. Negro. The word Negro means a black man, one descended from the African race and does not commonly include mulatto. This is Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. African descent. Persons of African nativity or of African descent within the meaning of the Naturalization Act as amended by Act July 14, 1870, are members of the Negro races of Africa or their descendants by intermixture with races constituting free white persons. Once again, free white persons is not identifying Europeans. It is a status. And I want you to look up free white persons in the law dictionary and you will be surprised by what you see in there. Well, let me continue. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, on that note, it was a dude who came from Egypt to the Americas, right? And when he got to America, they told him that he was to be classified as white. Mm -hmm. You're already ahead of the studies, brother. Hold on, hold on. We're going to get there. We got that in there, brother. Let's look at this book of us. Constituted free white persons, the Negro race is referred to being those from which the emancipated slaves in the United States descend. So African descent, synonymous with Negro, synonymous with black man. You say you're African, it's a Negro, a black man. Talking about the same, in law, talking about the same thing. And a quick history on African coming from Cyprio Africanus, the Roman general. It was named after, it, it was, uh, the, he got the nickname after Hannibal, the Moorish general. And once he conquered this region of what we now know Africa, those people became his subjects, Africans. The Roman is what African comes from. Understand it, Cyprio Africanus. S-C-I-P-I-O, I believe is how you spell the first name. Uh, just on that note of Africa news, um, understand that when we're dealing with European co uh, colonial system of things, that everything that they do deals with indoctrination. Mm. So even the spell of calling, considering yourself African, is a spell that's dealing with defeat. Mm -hmm. It deals with your defeat. So when you say it, you're, you're attaching the name 
of the European sun who defeated you. You see? And so these things are done without our knowledge, of course. But we have to look and examine all of it. And so when we, that's why it's important when we learn something, we have to implement. Because these things that we're dealing with are so powerful that, I mean, just, I shouldn't even have to iterate that. You can just go outside and look at your neighborhood. Islam. Islam. Hold on one second. Uh, let me just get through the last two. Black person. Occurring in constitution and laws must be taken in its generic sense as contradistinguished from white. Contradistinguished is the complete opposite. And when you look up white and you understand that it means purity and it has all of these positive meanings, in law, black must be taken as the opposite of that, regardless of how we feel, because this is status now. Lastly, color. By common usage in America, this term in such phrases as colored persons, the colored race, colored man, people of color, and that's including our brown brothers and sisters, Latinos and Hispanics as well. Let's not get that confused, because they're us as well. And the like is used to designate Negroes or persons of the African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry. It has also been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person, which the courts are bound judicially to know. Colored person, African, African descent, African American, Negro, Black, it's all the same, synonymous in law. And it's all represented in the status. You cool on that? Yeah. Um, now we're going to go ahead and skip over to the Federal Directive Number 15. It's also known as the Race and Ethnic Standards for Federal Statistics and Administrative Reporting. This directive provides standard classifications for record keeping, collection, and presentation of data on race and ethnicity in federal program administrative reporting and statistical activities. This uh, it's the same page. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. A little low. A little. A little low. Um, these classifications should not be interpreted as being scientific or anthropo anthropological in nature, nor should they be viewed as determinants of eligibility for participation in any federal program. I just want to stop here and say it is saying it should not, which is a little different than it shall not. It should, but it could be, right? And it's speaking of federal programs. But it doesn't say what else. State programs, for instance. Mm -hmm. Municipality programs, for instance. So you got to be, and when we're dealing with law, it's very specific. And you got to keep your eye, you know, read the fine print, as they say. The, mm -hmm. the devil is in the details. Right. You got to be careful because they, things are worded in a particular way. And it's by design. And if you just read through it and think it means something and you don't know what it means, they got you. Yeah. Now we'll get to the definitions in Federal Directive Number 15, and I urge you to look up, just hit, hit the Google search, Federal Directive Number 15, it's talking about race and ethnicity, ethnicity, ethnicity excuse me, thank you. <laughs> the basic racial and ethnic categories for federal statistics and program administrative reporting are defined as follows. American Indian or Alaskan Native. A person having origins in any of the original peoples of North America who maintains cultural identification through tribal affiliation or community recognition. Mm -hmm. Asian and Pacific Islander. A person having origins in any of the original peoples of the Far East, Southeast Asia, the Indian subcontinent, or the Pacific Islands. This area includes, for example, China, India, Japan, Korea, the Philippine Islands, Samoa. Black. Listen very carefully. A person having origins in any of the black racial groups of Africa. Hold on now. Hold on now. A person having origins in any of the black racial groups. Groups of what? 
Are they specific? No. Of Africa. They're in Africa. Where? You see? It's very general. They don't tell you what group. Could be a group of animals, for instance. Right? A group of human chattel property, for instance. And not specific, as you see with Asian Pacific Islander, American Indian, a person having origins in any of the original peoples. But when you go down to black, it's any black racial group. <coughs> Let's see what white says. This is where it gets real interesting. A person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, North Africa, or the Middle East. <laughs> so white as a status means you have origins in the original peoples. Listen carefully. The original pe people of Europe, and by the way, we were actually in Europe first, just so you don't get it twisted. We were there first also. But more specifically, North Africa. Who was in North Africa? Could it have been the Moors? <laughs> or the Middle East? There's another very interesting term. Where's the Middle East? Where's the Middle West? You see? They're creating these terms. A lot like Arabia. Arabia is another term you have to look into. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, they put some little magic on it. <laughs> if you start looking up in Arabia, you see that there's, it's actually talking about an area, but it's not specifically talking about a location, like a, a country or a land. The Middle East, if you, if you weren't aware, includes <coughs> Egypt. So white means you have origins in the original peoples of Egypt and North Africa. Mm -hmm. Status, and this is race and ethnic, ethnic, ethnicity, ethnicity standards for the federal programs in the U.S., the United States. You understand why status is important and knowing what the words mean? Mm -hmm. Being ignorant of it, you may call yourself black and you're just some black racial group in somewhere in Africa, but where from? You say white, well now you're talking about Europe, a specific place, North Africa. The Middle East, even though it's created, is still a specific area. And if you look, all of them are, are, are connecting you to a specific area, except for black. Black is the Africa, the continent. And that's not by accident. That is by design. Islam? Islam. Question? Yes. So, um, Islam you know, when you fill out all these applications and things like that, is it better for us to put, um, I define state or um, white? It's a good question. What do you feel? Can, can you speak a little louder? Oh, I just because, you know, they always have you fill out when you have applications and stuff. Sometimes, sometimes they don't allow you not to stay. You have to stay. But should we do, uh, I decline to stay or white? No, so I'm thinking that we should do the white, but I just want to, that's what we're supposed to do. If you know your history. Okay. According to the status. Because that's right. who you really are. We are the white people. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little, it's a little like, ah. Uh, because I know that the, the white man is the devil. Or so they say. <laughs> but you, what are they really saying when they say that? You see? Wow. The black man is God. The pale man is God. You see? You got to understand. What are you going to say, Brother Nabat? Um, white is the answer. I would say that without a problem. Um, according to the, this title the administration of the federal code, this is the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, and everything that is stated in regards to the definitions of black, Hispanic, white, are in here as well, so your employees or your employer has this information. And so when you go down, it'll tell you, it'll, it'll go into the, the details in regards to identifying with the race. It'll say, black or African American include all employees who identify as black. 
males in column D and as black females in column J. So nobody has a gun to our head saying, you, you gonna say black. That was doing slavery. But you know, we're free now. And so we must proclaim our nationality individually as our own. And according to the prophet Noah who are lead in our questionnaire, um, and I'm paraphrasing, white means pure. Pure means God, God means Lord of the land. So again, what the brother said is, we're the de jure white people. And, and de jure is a large term, D-E-J-U-R-E. De jure, D-E-J-U-R-E. And that is the opposite of de facto. De facto, D E. F A C T O. I would tell you what that means, but man knows not by being told. <laughs> so I, I, want you to look, I want you to look those terms up if you don't know. Uh, we're going to show them proof. Uh, yeah, brother. Uh, yeah, question regarding uh, checking those boxes. I was, uh, I don't know where I heard it, but. I heard that some people say to create another box and put Moorish American and check that on those documents. That's that's something I've heard. So mm -hmm. just to clarify that, should we check the white box or should we create a separate box? Do you see what I'm saying? Very, very good point. That's maybe an option. Why, why isn't it an option? Right. Just because they don't have the box there doesn't mean... So could you put other? What is What is other? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Right in more sure. And if and if and if we're really being if we're really being proper, our race is Asiatic. Right. So if we're speaking on race, then we should put Asiatic, not necessarily referring to Asia as we think it, but at one time the whole earth was known as Asia. And as us being the first peoples, well, we were the Asiatics. So understand what that, that term and that status represents as well. See three white persons right here. I'm gonna just read this uh this this, this section right here. Let's see where this goes. It includes Magars, Latin Finns, and the Basque and the Albanians. It includes the mixed Latin, Celtic Iberian, and Hmm. Something there. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> Moorish inhabitants. Well, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And this is from a Black's Law Dictionary. Right there. They say, you know, you want to hide something from a, put it in a book, right? Don't they say that? It's in the book. It's not illegal. You just flip it open. Check it for yourself. Go on Google. Check it for yourself. It's very simple. Um, yeah, I just want to mention that um, my six times great grandmother is from Portugal, mm -hmm. and she settled in the Caribbean. As I was a child growing up in St. Thomas, none of my parents or my family ever called ourselves black. Mm -hmm. We never called ourselves black, and mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that could have probably been passed along from my six times great grandmother. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, I would have to think so. <laughs> um, because they did not. Right, you did. I, I have I have an example of the Dred Scott case, uh, which is really important. But uh, I want you to do that study. I have an excerpt from uh, Chief Justice Taney, one of the Supreme Court justices, on that case, and he has some very important things that he spoke about with regards to the Dred Scott case and the decision. Dred Scott, just to, to briefly cover, was a, a quote unquote slave. Uh, who tried to purchase his freedom, got denied, so he went to the courts because he went to the north, and once you went past a certain area in, in the United States of America, you were considered free. It went back and forth to the courts all the way up to the Supreme Court, which is the highest court of the land. They made a decision. It was plaintiff in error. It was thrown out of court. The reason being is because of his status. He, he didn't have the proper status to even be in the court. Because as a Negro, as a black man, he has no status. He has no rights. He's not a citizen. But I don't want you to believe me on this. Read what it says. Because he also mentions, he also mentions the Indians. And 
saying even though they weren't a part of the United States when it was created, they had their own government, their own laws, and they were respected as free people. And so they had the right to come in to the United States and be citizens if they so choose. And they had sovereignty on the land, even as the United States was there. Now, what happened to them, that's a whole nother discussion, and you know how they got you know, regulated to the, to, the, um, to the reservations. But that's, that's, that's more complex. Yeah, brother? I was just wondering if you would clarify, because uh, you say we're, we can claim white, so to speak, um, but it says a person had the origin in, the, uh, in any of the original peoples of Europe, North Africa, or the Middle East. But you say that we are from North America, so how could we, if we're going by their laws, right? We don't, we weren't actually in Europe, North Africa, we were in North America, right? So when we claim American Indian, you know what I'm saying? Right? To, to clarify, yeah. one is not their laws. We actually gave all of this information to them. Okay. Also, we were there and we were here. That's the trick. Is they make it seem as though we came from over there as slaves, or there was people here, and they had nothing to do with those people. We are the same people, and this we were on all over the world long before the Europeans were ever around. We are indigenous and Aboriginal on every continent, I believe. Is that correct? Right. And also, what we have to understand is that what we call today America, when the land was whole, this is Africa. It's split, but it's still the same land. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, you know, that's where you have to get into a little more studies and understand the language and, and what they're saying. But if you can get in your mind that North Africa, Northwest Africa, is actually North America, that's what we have to understand. Is that when they say North Africa, really, it's still all of this is all the same land. So. Um, I hope that somewhat answers your question. Um, but I wanted to get to the current examples of black as a legal status because it's very powerful. And my brother Fly Benzo in the back pointed it out. Before we get to our brother Mustafa Hefni, which was an Egyptian, let's first, um, let's first read you a little excerpt um, that I found on the Wall Street Journal. Chinese people in South Africa have the status of black. A high court in South Africa ruled on Wednesday that Chinese South Africans will be reclassified as black, a term that includes black Africans, Indians, and others who are subject to discrimination <coughs> under apartheid. As a result of this ruling, ethnically Chinese citizens will be able to benefit from government affirmative action policies aimed at undoing the effects of apartheid. Uh, the next page. So after 3.3, you flip over from 3.3. Sorry. So you flip over right after 3.3 at the top there. I'm reading from this excerpt. We all, we all good? <laughs> at, the top, at the top of the page. In 2006... In, in 2006, the Chinese Association of South Africa sued the government, claiming that its members were being discriminated against because they were being treated as whites and thus failed to qualify for business contracts and job promotions reserved for victims of apartheid. The association successfully argued that since Chinese South Africans had been treated unequally under apartheid, they should be reclassified in order to redress the wrongs of the past. I point this out, and you can look this up for yourself, that we have Chinese brothers and sisters in South Africa that have the status as black. Follow me? It's clear that it's a status, right? Now let's go on the other side of things. As our brother uh, Fly Benzo said, Mustafa Hefi, a little bit below, and this is a CNN link, you can check this out. Look up, look up Mustafa Hefi, Egyptian, right? Mustafa Hefni was born in Egypt and has always been proud of his Egyptian culture and his African ancestry. But when Hefni immigrated to America, the U.S. government told him he was no longer a black man. I was told by immigration that I was white. 
I was not told by immigration that I was white until I passed the exam for citizenship. And then I was told, I am now white, he explains. Hefni initially laughed when told of his new racial classification. But he's no longer chuckling. He recently filed suit against the US government to get his race classification changed back from white to black. It hurt me. It hurts me. <laughs> See, you're laughing, but you understand the confusion. Right. Because right? he don't even know. Black is the... Let's, 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 uh, let's go a little further. It hurts me. It definitely hurts me, Heffney says. It hurts me because I'm able to reconcile my reality as a black person. In addition to the emotional hurt, Hefney says that when the government changed his race, they also changed his social status. Mm. I would have had more opportunity for advancement. <laughs> <laughs> and even for hiring, <laughs> had I been considered black, he says. I was prevented from applying and requesting positions and other benefits, benefits for minority person because I knew I was legally white. Not, we're not talking about how you feel, culturally, socially, what you think, legally, he's considered white. And why? Because according to the standards, white, Egypt, he's an Egyptian. Therefore, he's a white person, right? So now we have eight Chinese brothers and sisters in South Africa that have the status of black. And we have an Egyptian brother <laughs> coming from the land, and now he has the status as white over here. Do you see the confusion that's going on, the games that are being played? Especially when we think we're black as an identity. When it's not dealing with identity at all, it's dealing with the status. Yes. Make sense? Yes. Absolutely. And even if you touch on where he says he argued for the benefits of, for minority, which minority means incompetent. So he just went all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I didn't cover that one. I did. I did. I did. I'm sorry. Brilliant. No, no. Amazing. Minority. Look it up in the law dictionary. See what it, look it up in a regular unabridged dictionary. See what minority means and understand what's being communicated when we say we're the minority. A minor, right? Do minors, are they able to do everything, right? Okay, makes sense, right? Now let's, now we're gonna bring it on home. This is my favorite one right here. This is a case involving quote unquote police brutality of a man who was initially identified as a skinny black guy, okay? A man from India who was slammed down, slammed to the ground by a police officer had been singled out by, by police after a caller said a skinny black guy with a toboggan hat was walking in the neighborhood and peering into garages, recording show. Okay, and this is happening in Alabama, mind you. So you understand what's going on. Okay? <coughs> After finding out his status, let's see what happens. The growing public outrage about police brutality in the United States extended abroad last month after an Indian man. <laughs> hmm. So he was initially identified as a skinny black guy. They later found out he was from India, and I'm not speaking about the so-called Indians that they say are from here. He's from India as in over there, in the east. Understand? So he has a nationality. After an Indian man was left partially paralyzed following a violent arrest by two Alabama police officers, on Friday, officials in Alabama announced the indictment of Eric Sloan Parker on charges that he violated the civil rights. You hear me? The officer violated the civil rights. Don't we march for that? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't we been marching for that? <laughs> hmm. The civil rights of Shurish Bahai, Bahai? Excuse me if I pronounce it wrong. Shurish Bai. Shurish Bai Patel. That's his appellation, the Indian man's appellation, his true name. 
and used unreasonable force during the February 6th arrest. Very key, keep in mind, February 6th. Law enforcement officers who violate their oath to protect and use excessive force must be brought to justice. U.S. Attorney Joyce White uh, Vance said Saturday. The federal prosecutor said Parker was being charged with the deprivation of rights under color of law. Color of law is another law term that I want you to look up. I'm not going to tell you what it means. I want you to look it up and see what it says for yourself. You will be surprised. The, indict the incident sparked outrage towards the police in Alabama and the an embarrassment for the state at home and abroad. Shortly after news of the arrest spread, the Indian Foreign Ministry vocalized its condemnation to senior U.S. diplomats in India and urged for an expeditious investigation. Alabama Governor Robert Bentley apologized on February 17th. The incident happened on the 6th. By the 17th, the governor of Alabama was apologizing to the Indian government for the treatment of Patel. Now I want to ask you, especially in light of what's going on in Baltimore, or let's think about Trayvon Martin, or Oscar Grant, or Sean Bell, Mike Brown, right? Oscar Grant, right. This event happened on the 6th. By the 17th, they, they're going to issue an apology by the governor in Alabama. And I looked up where this happened. It happened three hours away from Selma, where we just had the 50th anniversary and they're marching for the civil rights. Right? Isn't that kind of odd? We've been marching for 50 years trying to get civil rights. And here, the Indian man, his civil rights were violated and the officer was indicted on charges, they're issuing apologies, saying that they must be brought to justice. And he was paralyzed, partially paralyzed. The brother in Baltimore, he was, he was murdered, killed, spine snapped. Where's the apology from the Baltimore government? I mean the Maryland government. Do you know why? That, all right, you see, you see? politics on a world level. You see, the Indian government flexed on them. And they are a superpower economically. They say, yo, 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 you violating our people. You need to clean this up. Right away, right away. What's that a human rights issue as opposed to a civil rights? It's also a human rights issue. Yeah. As, a, as opposed to black. Mm -hmm. mm. No rights. And we don't even have civil rights. Because civil rights is equated to rights of a citizen. Mm -hmm. And we are not citizens. Mm -hmm. We can't be citizens mm -hmm. as blacks, mm -hmm. or as African Americans, mm -hmm. or as Negroes, or people of color, mm -hmm. ETC. Mm -hmm. We cannot be. Section 20 of the 13th Amendment, um, there's a, the, 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 I mean, excuse me, the, the 13th Amendment actually has 20 sections. And section 12 says clearly, that Africans shall not be citizens. Now they took that out and covered it up, but if you do some digging, you'll see. Aside from the, the Supreme Court ruling that said that we can't be uh, citizens because we descended from slaves and they were never intended on being inside the, the, um, uh, inside the constitutional fold of government of the United States Republic. Uh, two things, um, relative to the status, uh, simply put, Brothers and sisters, when they talk about status, they really, when you claim black, what you're essentially saying is that you're their article of merchandise. You're their property and you're an animal. 
So that's why they continue to abuse and misuse our people. And then secondly, I was in uh, the yes. Library of Congress last year searching the 1320, and I approached the librarian and asked him for the particular journal. And he said, oh, no, 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 you're not looking for the 1320, you're looking for this. Undoubtedly, the 13th Amendment was two sections, and he pushed it in my face. Mm -hmm. So I kind of recouped, I went back to my desktop, I sat down, and I think about how am I going to approach this European. So I pulled it up on my desktop, and I showed him. And he says, oh, okay, uh, yeah. And he placed a call quickly to the, the right department, and he sent me over there, and they had it already prepared for me. So once you know your information, and you stand on it, then they'll provide it to you. Indeed. Standing with your status. Stand. Um, I, I got I was, was going on? No, I, it was a, um, one of the, the brothers who are watching, participating in the live stream. So as I said, this is being streamed. He just, um, Hassan uh, Bay just wanted to make the point that uh, a toxinous Status. Understanding our autonomous status also equates to being a free white person. Can you, can you spell that out for the people? Autonomous. I, I, I sort of remember, but I don't got it precisely. And I, while he's grabbing that, there's also a section 3.4 on our status as regards to nationality. And uh, according to the, you got it? Yep. Okay. It's um, A U T O C H T H O N U S. Islam Hassan Bay. Islam. Um, I'm just going. Yes. I have a question. So I understand your your um, points about not being citizens, but how does that jive with the Fourteenth Amendment? I thought I was supposed to correct that. Can you repeat the question? I said I understand this discussion about us not being citizens, but how does that jive with the Fourteenth Amendment, which was specifically designed to address citizens mm. for Africans? So, from my perspective, it's basically like we're not supposed to be citizens, but we'll give you this jacket, and you can pretend you when you had this jacket on, you can act and be like citizens. The key being that. They're putting the jacket on, and they can take it off. And Prophet Noble Drew Ali also said that we don't even need the 14th Amendment. If all men are created equal, then there should be no need for that. But see, that, that's the key is understanding that black doesn't truly represent a human being. And let me, let me follow that up with Noble Drew Ali. This is a quote from the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science or the Moorish Science Temple of America. Um, according to all true and divine records of the human race, there is no Negro, black, or colored race attached to the human family. So you see, what we, what we don't quite understand is that when we're using those terms, it's not actually speaking of us as human beings. It's as property. Artificial, bro. Artificial property. As property that's only entitled to federal benefits. Benefits. As they see fit. Exactly. Now, if they don't see fit to give us any benefits, you are bound by their rules and regulations once you receive those benefits. Those statutes and codes and amendments and not the true laws. But yeah, yeah. and uh, the sister asked about the 14th Amendment. Uh, the 13th Amendment with two sections, the 14th and the 15th Amendment, are granted privileges. Uh, you have to understand that there are two governments that exist on the land. There's the United States of America and the United States. The United States was formed in 1871. And they are the ones that grant privileges to their citizens. So blacks are citizens of that particular government, which is a corporation. Just, 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 to, just to, to bring that point home, because this is, we're talking about trickery here, okay? We're talking about sleight of hand. The United States of America, the Republic, the U.S. democracy. The United States of America Republic is the de jure. The U.S. democracy is the de facto. You gotta understand there's a game. That's why in the, in the, um, the Pledge of Allegiance, if you look in the Constitution, in fact, there's not democracy in there at all. And yet when you hear politicians speak, the U.S. specifically, 
they're always talking about democracy, right? But democracy, that's the, that's the, when we always speak about the they, they are doing this to us, they are trying to get us, they, they, that is the they, the U.S. democracy, which is really a corporation. But but see, this this is the, the yeah. But the hustle is the hustle is they make republic they make republic and republican look so bad that you don't even ah, I don't want it. Now starting to hit me in the head and make sense. And so you you get into the, the Democrat and that's giving them what they want. Right, really the whole and they sent the blacks to the Democrats, which is the de facto stuff. Oh my goodness. But it was, it was, it was, it was a switch. It was a switch. You switched the Democrats because of the treatment. But, 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 but even under, then, the term Republic, Republicans and Democrats is different from the original government, which he's talking about. Yeah, all right, so, so even understand that even Republican versus Democrat is part of the hustle. Exactly. It's to get you to think, okay, well, I don't want to be them, so I'm going to be them. But really, they're both working for the same. The same way the uh, the attorneys, you know, the the, uh, the attorneys that represent you or whatever, and you're the, they're both working for the same the same system. Right. 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 True indeed. Um, <laughs> Let me, uh... Can I add something real quick? Hmm? You're, on, you're still on 3.4, did we move? Uh, yeah, we was, well, I, I actually didn't even get to 3.4, so let me cover that real quickly. You got time. We got time? Yeah. Okay, uh, real quickly, 3.4 is speaking on nationality. And according to the Immigration and Nationality Act of the U.S. Department of State, it states that the term national of the United States means A, a citizen of the United States, or B, a person, though not a citizen of the United States, owes permanent allegiance to the United States. So if you are a citizen of the U.S., they use that term and say you are a national. But we know we can't be citizens, so we can't be national. Never mind that that's a corporation, but just understanding the idea of nationality, and if we would even try to claim to be a U.S. national, we cannot because we're not U.S. citizens. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it also, uh, also just to put on the record, um, allegiance is defined as an obligation of fidelity and obedience to government in consideration for protection that that government gives. Black's Law for for the Bishop. Okay, so it's obedience. You got to be obedient. Mm -hmm. Alleged, uh, you know, the pledge of allegiance is meaning I'm going to be obedient to you. But who are you pledging the allegiance to? The U.S. corporation. We're not citizens. We don't have rights. So we're really just pledging ourselves as voluntary slaves. Really and true. Just to oh, cut it, true. cut it all the way, to cut it all the way plain. Um, That's a legal term too. Right. right, true indeed, true indeed. Um, so I say that to say that without, without a nationality, we are considered stateless. This is an international term, stateless, you don't have a state. And, and another thing we have to realize is we say like the state of California, the state of Maryland, that those are actually nations. And they all grouped together to form, they got it, you know, clicked up and created the United States, or the United Nations of America. That's why each state had its own flag and its own constitution. You see? And it's, this is a word game. Why is D.C. a territory? Mm. Mm. That's, that's, a, that's a good one. What, what, what made you just think of that? <laughs> well, because it's been budgeting for a okay, okay. Yeah, the, the yeah. district. I mean, we would need to research what a district means. They, they overstate because they overstand the United Nations. What do you want to add on that? I mean, they understand. <laughs> the District of Columbia is a play on uh, original authors. Christopher Columbus. Um, okay. My understanding. And um, I believe it was 18, 
In 1780, it actually was declared a corporation, the United States government. The name of that government was called uh, District of Columbia. Right. And so, like, this ties into, I don't know if it's going to be covered today, but um, just dealing with uh, birth certificates and things, everything is housed in the District of Columbia. This, this deals with jurisdiction, status, and so that's the reason why they do this, do that, so they can uh, gain status. It's, it's, it's like it's yes. like this. People don't understand that you have you have the state and then you have the federal government. Those are two separate. I don't know how to say it's it. There you go. Yeah. It's separate from each other. The District of Columbia is a, it's supposed to be a ten by uh, ten square mile radius where the federal government has jurisdiction only within that territory. Now, when they purchase lands. They have to say, well, this is our land, so we have jurisdiction on the land. Mm -hmm. But that goes to say, when they created the District of Columbia, it was only supposed to be used, they're only supposed to have jurisdiction within that uh, 10 by 10 area. You know what I'm mm saying? -hmm. Yes, but they gain jurisdiction through the zip codes. Right, right. the zip codes and trips, and those and, are those words of art. And by yeah. us voluntarily yeah. going into the system. Once yeah. we say it, or we sign up for that citizen, you know, that state okay. driver's license, that birth certificate. One quick comment, last week. I used to work in bureaucratic health services environment, okay? And back in the 80s, they, in patient intake, working in emergency room, whatever, they implemented on the patient intake form that we had to identify whether you're a U.S. citizen or not. And I'm like, who cares? <laughs> for what we're here for, who cares? And they required it, too. And if you didn't put it, if you look like me, you were required to put on their black. If you put anything else, we, the employees, were required to correct it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Not, not I, I, I want to read. I want to read quickly. This here is the, uh, the Article 13 with the 20 sections. Okay, Section 12 states: The traffic of slaves with Africa is hereby forever prohibited on pain of death and the forfeiture of all the rights and property of persons engaged therein. And very key. And the descendants of Africans shall not be citizens. Not should not. Not could not. Shall not. It's a reason why we don't see this uh, the, this uh, Article 13 with the, set, the, 20, the 20 sections in it. Because it spells it out for you. Then you have to understand well, why not? Why are we not citizens? African, the descendants of African settings. That goes back to what African means. African descent in the law dictionary, which is synonymous with Negro and a black man. That's why they cannot and shall not be citizens. Make sense? I, I did some research on that just to find out if they eliminated it, and they did not. They kept the S-16, Joint Resolution X S-16. So if you follow S-16, lead you to the Senate records where it passed the Senate, the House, and the vote into law by the President. Mm -hmm. And it's in the records. They've never been repealed in that. Never. Okay. Powerful. Um, I have a certified copy of it. Oh. I didn't bring it with me today. I need your records. I need all the records. Give me your email. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read, I'm gonna read quickly uh, what stateless means internationally, and then we're going to go to how to correct it, because, you know, having this knowledge is one thing, but we have to be able to apply it. So let me just get to the status real quick. And the United, the United Nations defines stateless as a person who is not considered as a national by any state under, under the operation of its law. Uh, this is 3.4, uh, the next page here. Last paragraph. Yeah, the second to the last paragraph. So 3.4, the second to last paragraph. Right above 3.5. This means a state that a stateless person is someone who does not have the nationality of any country, which would be black people. There's no black people. There's no Afro Africa America. There's no people of color land. You understand? <laughs> Even, even Latino, Latino brothers and sisters. Latin is a culture, language. It's not a, a land. Hispanic, also. 
You see, it's a, it's a, it's a game of, you know, yes. we think, oh, that's just semantics. No, it's, no. it's really more, really? it's about law, and it's about the truth of things. And it makes, they make it, they pass it off as though it's just playing with words, but it's really not. Mm -hmm. It's really giving us a status or taking away a status. Mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, U, uh, the UNHCR describes the effects of being stateless, <laughs> aka people without a nationality. Mm -hmm. It states that if you have no nationality, you often forfeit the basic rights that citizens enjoy. Mm -hmm. Access to education and the job market. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. um, ability to buy and sell property or to open a bank account. When thousands of people are stating this for the same reason, this creates communities that are alienated and powerless. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Don't, doesn't the black community seem powerless yes. and alienated? They show, they show that on District 9. The movie District Nine. Oh man! They tell you right there, man. And yes, yeah, see, this brother, a very good point. These movies that they show are definitely not just for entertainment. They are putting a lot of information. Lucy is another one. Um, Cloud Atlas is another one that I, I, I encourage people to check out. Jumpers. Um, mm -hmm. Jumpers. John. Jumpers. With Samuel Jumpers. Jackson. Um, Jumpers. Um, I just saw the school. Mal what do you say, Mal Malibu? Malibu. Oh, yeah. oh, the Disney movie. Yeah. Oh, the Disney movie. Yeah. 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 The Disney movie. Yeah. 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 It's with Angelina Jolie. If you look at Disney movie, yeah. 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 Look, look that up. It's very interesting. And, uh, well, in the beginning, it's about the Moors. This is the land of the Moors. Right? What do you say? Powerless and what else? Alienated. So alienated and powerless. So when an individual in essence says, I'm black, you're saying alienated and powerless? Is that what you're telling me, brother? Indeed, yeah. Indeed brother. Stateless. And stateless. stateless. Huh. No nationality. No national homeland. No home to go to. Right? Like property. Yeah, just put you over here. Into this ghetto. Right, or McDonald's and Burger King and all of that other non All the liquor stores and the hot Cheetos and the Fritos. Oh, not the other churches. I'm still struggling with that myself. Uh, yeah. Now, now let me get to uh, what Noble Jew Ali said, then we'll get to corrections. The universal prophet Noble Jew Ali stated himself in the Quran questions for Moorish Americans. What is meant by the word black? The answer is black, according to science, means death. Okay? Yeah. What's science? Yeah. Jurisprudence. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is jurisprudence is the science of law. And in law, using jurisprudence, using science, we see that the legal term civilitir mortus means civilly dead, dead in the view of the law. Oh. The condition or state or status of one who has lost his civil rights, mm -hmm. rights of a citizen, and capacities, and is accounted dead in law. Yeah. This, is, this, is not, this is not my belief. I didn't say this. This is from a prophet. If you don't know who Noah Drowley is, he was born in 1886, North Carolina Territory. He's on the same level of Buddha, or Confucius, or Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or Jesus, or Yahshua is his true name. In the Muslim word, they call him Isa, Ibn Meryem. Noble Jew Ali is on that same status. And he told us this information in 1913, over 100 years ago. And there's a specific reason why he's not known. There's a specific reason. Because there's a lot of, there is truth in so much of what he has put forth. And in the Bible it says, the truth shall set you free. Mm. Ain't that something? <laughs> Ain't that something? 
And let me say this, I, I mean this, no disrespect to our elders, to our peers, to anybody that has been fighting for our liberation, our freedom, and using the term black, right? But we gotta stand on truth now. We don't have time for games. We don't have time for feelings and emotions on this. If the goal is freedom, liberation, then we gotta be true. We gotta be right and exact. And, and this is not this is not to take away from the work that's been done as so-called black people or to discredit the effort. But I mean, you can run as fast as you like, and if you're running in the wrong direction, does that really help us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we know better. So, like, would you say like with the Black Lives Matter? Do you think that that's something they put oh. out there? Yeah. Like, oh, like, yeah. but of yeah. but of or course, <laughs> like, I, I wish I had the article because it's, uh, I saw an article reported that it was linked to um, uh, George. George Soros, I believe, um, that was funding this whole campaign, putting the money in with all the flyers and all the cute designs and decorations and all the people that came out of nowhere, Black Lives Matter, right? All of a sudden, quick, just like that. This is a specific reason to keep you in the game. See, even, even what we see going on in the media today about all the murders and all of the abuses that we're going through, is to get us emotional. Right. In sports, right? I play sports. If you can get inside the mind, mm -hmm. the state of the opposing player, you can rattle him. Yeah. You got him off his game plan. Mm -hmm. That's how you win. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, for that matter. Mm -hmm. He would get inside the minds of people so well that the fight was over before it began. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening to us right now. We get, ah, Black Lives Matter. Da, da, da. You see what's happening? Mm -hmm. And they roll out the plan accordingly. I saw it happen with Oscar Grant. I saw I was out in the streets and I was black, black power the whole nine. And then I and I was on the streets when it wasn't so-called riots when we were all marching peacefully. I went home and charged my phone and saw on CNN riots in Oakland, riots in Oakland. I said, well, I was just down there. wasn't no riots. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I wasn't very conscious, but I, I remember looking at the TV about the, the true riots in L.A. That's a riot. What they were broadcasting to the world was a framed perspective, a calculated perspective to, to incite that emotion. Yeah, let's riot. Let's destroy things. Boom. Okay, we got them. Now let's bring in the police. Mm -hmm. You see, they ride us up a little bit. Same thing with Mike Brown. Mm -hmm. Got us all ride up again. Ferguson started bringing in even more military. Mm -hmm. They're doing the same thing in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Riling us up. And this is all basically to get us all the way out of law. To say, forget the Constitution. And, and when, when we say that, as the heirs, as the true Americans, right, then they can operate in that manner. Because we're giving that a thought. We say, no, forget the Constitution, forget the laws. Well, they're being unruly. They're being terrorists. You think that what we see about what's going on in the East, when they label them people as terrorists, you think that's not going to happen to us if we continue doing what we're doing? It's already happening. It's already, and we have, and there's enough footage to frame that perspective. And, if they, and we don't control the media. We can argue and say, oh, well, that's not what happened. But CNN is playing all throughout the airports, international. And people are going to say, well, look at it. And then you see the videos and, and the hip hop and, and how we portray. And they say, well, they are. Look, I mean, they're doing it. They're savages. F the police, right? Well, they're doing about, I got one question. No, not, not a question, but in the Bay Area, Every time we get into a riot, a so-called riot, or any situation that's dealing with our our people, anything active, what they label the media as we being destructive, what they do, they allow their people to get out of town, go back to their homes, so that they can carry on. If we ever notice that, that the traffic jams, when things start happening like this, gets big. They let people off work so they can get home, so they can create, keep doing what they're doing. So it's just a word to know.
First hand. I saw it. Let the schools out early the whole night. Yeah. Well, I worked, we worked out here at Kaiser. Let us off work early mm-hmm. so we could get home. Yeah, it's getting away from you. And not by accident. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, this is by design. So they, they let all the murder take place. Yeah. You got, you got, you, you know, you, you can have feelings towards the quote unquote enemy or the opposition, but you got to respect their game plan. You got to know what the enemy is doing. Otherwise, you'll get played. And they also try to take the racial element out because whenever that happens, they always get a black spokesperson to come out, mm-hmm. either yeah. as a reporter or as a police officer or as a police or as a district attorney. But they're always after, they're always a person who looks like us that comes out and basically, so it's not a racial issue. Mm-hmm. It's angular. And Al Hajma Lee spoke on this. He spoke, anytime somebody speaks up, one of us speaks up, they immediately get that opposing side. Oh, well, some of them say this, and some of them say that, so we don't know, blah, 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 blah. It's all by design, but rather than focus on that, let's get to the correction. Let's get to how we can fix things. Yeah. Yes, Mom, can I reject? Can we take this, take this, because you're talking about citizenship, expiration, and I'll turn the page on this bottom one. Go ahead. Because uh, work it. uh, it's in support of what you're saying. And this is back to their pretext when they start that race stuff and that they don't know United States law, you know, the so-called scholars that keep playing the race game. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, just read it out. It's down the bottom. Okay. Citizenship. Citizenship of the United States expatriation. Yes. Expatriation of UGC 459. Uh, sir, there's, there's strictly speaking no Moroccan laws. No, make sure you read that. Oh. Remember, United States, Morocco. So when you're looking at United States law, you when you're looking at law of the land, that's the corporation and operation. That's the country. Mm-hmm. So then when we're, we're talking, talking we're talking congressional records here. Mm-hmm. So this 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 backs up everything he's telling you, but it also as Sister Sabrina was talking about, you know, when you have different scholars that claim to be scholars that keep playing that race game and act like they don't know this. You know, there really isn't a debate. What they won't do is expose this kind of information. Well, go ahead, brother, go ahead, and go ahead and do your work. It, uh, sir, there are, strictly speaking, no Moroccan laws relating to citizenship or more subjects in Morocco. The fundamental laws of this non-Christian country are based entirely upon the Islamic code, no part of which treats of the subject of citizenship. Mm. Now, there you go, 460. Mm. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries and the Moorish Empire, by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. But as I understand from the above acknowledged instructions, that is not the desire of the department to call for a report upon such lines, I will therefore confine, confine these remarks to general conditions existing, which may possibly be of some use in connection with the information desired. Real quickly, and when, you, when they mention Christian, you gotta understand that it's all, you gotta look in history and understand that Christian was related to a specific people and not what we think as church. Okay, mm-hmm. so this is, this is a long-term war between the so-called Christians and the Muslims, or the Romans, mm-hmm. and the Muslims, or the Moors. Understand, these are, these are terms throughout history that you got to know. And I would advise you to look up the definition of Christianity yeah. and see what it says in the, in the dictionary for yourself. Um, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the law pertaining to the same in other countries, with the exception that all persons residing in Morocco who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protection are considered ipso juror as more subjects. So, if you can't prove you have citizenship from somewhere else, you are automatically Moroccan subjects. Mm-hmm. Understand that? That's who we are, right? But once we say we're black, now they got us in their system. That's now keep, keep that in mind. This is United States law. And, and furthermore, understand that the first treaty that the United States <coughs> entered into was with the Moroccan Empire, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, longest standing treaty. Where's that cited at right there? What, 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 law, what law is that cited under? This is United States law with citizenship and expatriation. Mm-hmm. 
which means anybody that the United States is talking about citizenship and don't tell the people this truth are BSing. And that's like the sister was saying, when you scholars pretend they don't know this, but they're called scholars. To put it very simply and plain, the way we correct this is proclaim our nationality, declare our nationality. This is what a prophet told us back in 1913. If you don't do nothing else, if you don't protest, march, anything, declare your nationality. But why? That corrects our status, which corrects our relationship with other communities, co corrects our relationship with our estate, right? And this meaning the property as in the entire Americas. We're always searching where is our home, where do we come from? We are home. But we can't claim this as our home we can't have the title, the interest, the right, the sovereign right, as this is our home as blacks, as African Americans, as people of color, as Negroes, as natives, as any of that. Our nationality is Moorish American because we are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. Understanding that Morocco is not just the little, the little piece of land that you see on the maps today. It's from there across the Atlantic Ocean and all of the Americas. Okay? Understanding that's all of the Moroccan Empire. This is all our land, the Americas, anciently known as Northwest of Mexico. That's what happens when we correct our status. I mean, there's plenty of other things that we have to do, um, complex things that we have to get into, but the first step, right? The first step that we gotta do, step one, Proclaim and declare our nationality. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? That's the question yeah. that I want to clarify. What is proclaiming? In terms of, well, once we declare and stuff, what I want to clarify later is, you know, following stuff on public record and also what uh, agencies. I hear, I hear yeah, it. Yeah. But see, we'll do that at the end. We, yeah, yeah. we, we try we'll to do that at the end. A thousand miles a minute. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We made it. Let's first get, let's first get, let's just first get step one. Okay. Declare. Proclaim. What does that mean in law? Declare It's in there. They'll put it out there for you. Publicly. Put on the record. Yes. Written documents. To let the world know. Not just the U.S. Not just here nationally. Let the entire world know this is who we are. That is the first step. We can't do it as blacks. We can't do it as African Americans. And there's pr plenty of president, um, you know, uh, what's going on in Palestine right now with the uh, is Israeli nation state. They claim that land of Palestine is their own through the international courts. Mm -hmm. In fact, using their religious doctrine, their text. Okay, understand, I'm not agreeing with that at all, but understand how that works. They made a claim. They had evidence to support it. They took it over. Okay. We can make a claim. We have evidence. The Holy Quran and the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. And just so you think this is not just a religious book. It's, this works for history and you can put it on the record as evidence. Just as it was done there. The difference is we have a much superior claim. Understand? We have a much superior and evidence, not just in this book, but all the pyramids or mounds up and down the Americas to prove that we were here. We have evidence in history that proves that we are Moors. There's evidence in chapter 4 that has it on the record both in 1933 and currently with the uh, Illinois State Legislature that knows who we are very clearly. It's not a question. It's not some belief. This is a fact. The FBI, look up, this Google, FBI, Moorish Americans. They have about 30 PDF documents yeah. in which, on, on the record, they came out from the Freedom of Information Act. And inside those documents, it has this entire Quran copy. And this is an investigation that was going back in the 30s. So they know very clearly. It's not a question of whether they don't know. The question is on us. But see, before we can be who we are, and before we can speak who we are, we have to get our minds right. We must know mentally, we have to correct our state mentally on who we are. That mental state 
then we can correct our status, correct our estate. Right. ETC. Islam? Islam. Islam.